really life life was wonderful from the outside looking in i had everything that i wanted you know there wasn't a day that i couldn't do anything that i wanted to do you know i was all the man almighty <laughs> i thought i was uh you know it was it was past life you know everyone in my neighborhood was like wow he's back he's back on he, he's back who, who he used to be he didn't miss one step uh uh the truth really is that inside I was broken. I remember just coming home after all those nights. And I was just laying in bed and I'm just like, you're back to doing the same thing on the same trajectory as you always been your entire life, which is a, a destructive path. And when I came home, I was supposed to be a leader the right way. I had supposedly come home equipped with all this information and knowledge. And I told, hey, everyone, I'm going to change the world. And then, you know, I, when, I fell, when I fell flat on my face, I was embarrassed. And I still wanted to be a leader. I still wanted to be respected and looked up to. So I found what I can be respected and looked up to. And I really, it's really the wrong thing because people in my community, they see someone with the flashy stuff they see that as a leader they see that as yeah he made it but it's not a leader so i was being the wrong leader and i took advantage of that knowing that they're looking at me the wrong way you get what i'm trying to say it's like they're brainwashed so i'm gonna take advantage of it and i'm gonna be the leader i knew i was gonna go back to jail or prison uh soon or that i was gonna die uh, soon uh, I was really depressed, which has made me even go even harder into the alcoholism and to the pills and to the drugs and just try to get lost and all that. Monday or Tuesday and I went we had a bunch of drinks and I actually dropped my one of my friends off and I was on my way home and I was speeding a little bit it was raining and I hit the gas spun to the right try to overcorrect pull it to the left by the time it turned all the way left it ran straight to the wall from the driver to the passenger and I was gonna fly out the passenger side door win door window and I literally hit the wall with my head with the wind the, the glass separating me and the wall so I hit the wall with my head um, but the door won't open and I kicked it open and I'm crossing the highway and I can't see I, I, something keeps getting in my eyes and I went like this and when I went like, it's almost like I had a mask. Like, I don't know, it was weird. It felt like grass, like wet grass. Everything was completely covered. And I looked at my shirt and it was glowing, like glowing from the, from the moonlight. My shoes are gone. I had just got them. I've washed them probably four times and the blood is still all over them from that night, you see? Now, so I grab my phone and I try, I'm trying to dial, but the blood keeps dipping all like solid on the phone. And I'm trying to call my brother. They take me to McKinney Hospital to, to do the blood. I lost like almost four pints of blood. Um, that's a lot of blood. Um, but I had a fractured jaw and the blood is what was the most dangerous part, losing all that blood. And uh, I, thought, I thought I was gonna die. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die. So, that day definitely changed the trajectory of everything. Like a train hit me and was like, stop. You're going 100 miles an hour, but here, stop, stop. 
Essentially, the wreck put me in timeout, put me in my bed, made me start processing things, made me start uh, analyzing my life and where I was going. The, the thing is that I didn't have many options. What do I do? What, what, what are my options? Okay, I want to do good, but where, where do I turn, you know? So I'm scrolling through my phone. I'm like, I'm finna tell somebody everything. Nope, no, no, no. I was like, Sherry Garcia, man, well she understands, right? She's been down this type of life before too. Um, she, she looks like she wants to help failings. I'm a failing. And I was like, God, you know, I don't want to do this no more. Just give me an opportunity to get out of it. I needed an escape. I really did. I really did. People in the streets don't see it as that. They don't see the situation. I'm, a, I'm trying to escape from destroying my life because I know that's what I'm doing. And yeah, so I wrote this long message. Hey, I have five felonies. I have burglary. I have aggravated cases. I've shot people. I don't have any experience in anything. I don't have any skills. I don't have no education. But, but if you can help me, and if you can do anything with me, I'll give you my life. And uh, she didn't respond right away, <laughs> obviously, because I sent it to her like at four in the morning. So about two o'clock, I call her, and she's like, you know what? Don't worry about nothing else. Worry about your health, your physical health and your mental health first. Come work out with me. You know, I started working out. Started giving my mobility back. It got, got my, my, my weight issue was something that is very embarrassing, bro. So I didn't want to look like that. I wanted to be a professional, but I, I knew that I wouldn't portray the best image being so overweight. So I wanted to address that. And another thing on top of that was even though I went to prison, I don't have a lot of tattoos, but I had a mouthful of gold teeth. Um, so it was really embarrassing, bro. It was really embarrassing. But I was like, I'm just gonna be totally just here's everything. And the thing about Sherry, you know, the life that she's lived, I can come at her like that. She was messed up. And because she was messed up, God allows her to use that for good, for people like me to be able to approach her and be like, hey, I messed up. Can you help me? And uh, started just going to the office, hanging out. She kind of showed me what was going on in Cornbread Hustle and how the agency works. and. And little by little, I started doing more for Cornbread Hustle, more for Cornbread Hustle, and I, uh, now I'm the operation manager for Cornbread Hustle. So, yeah. I've been with Cornbread Hustle almost seven months. I now have full-time employment. Uh, I have my own vehicle. I've lost 42 pounds. Uh, I get to empower people every day, all day. I love what I do at work. I feel every day driven. It's purposeful living, purposeful work. And uh, it's really trending in the right direction. My name is being used in the proper sentences now. Our company is being elevated to the right places and God just continues opening doors. I still live out here in Pleasant Grove. I've, I've grew up here my entire life. Um, some people are kind of confused why I'm still here. I know that I hurt the community for many years out here. Uh, although I hurt the community, the people um, always had a connection with me and I've always had a connection with the people. There's a, there's a major lack of information and opportunity out here. Uh, oppression is major. And it's sometimes people think that people from these type of neighborhoods are irresponsible or lazy or uh, lack ambition, but the truth is that they lack information. 
And I kind of want to be the one to, or be one of the ones to bring opportunity and information out here as much as I can. Even if it's just a little part of, I'm only able to touch just a few lives, then it's very well worth it to me. If I could say anything to the kids or youth or anyone troubled, it could be from my community or another community, is that you're capable. Um, you're capable of more than what you think and know. You just need the right opportunities and the right people in your life. And they are out there. They do exist. You just have to find them. Put that uh, shovel in the ground and dig away. You have to be disciplined, but you're capable. That's what I would tell everyone that you're capable, you are worthy, you do have value, you just have to find your niche, but you do have it.